Hi everyone, it's Lou Collins. Today I'd like to introduce you to a brand new licensed product at Craft Stash and it's the Magic Roundabout. Now this is the second edition because you all love the Magic Roundabout the first time round. We've bought you even more fabulously designed products to add to your crafting stash. And in addition, I'm going to show you how to create this pop-up Magic Roundabout too. You can use all of your papers and your ephemera on. The best thing about this is that it all folds down flat so you can pop it into an envelope how brilliant is that first i'm going to show you through all the new products and then we're going to get straight into how to create this using just one simple nesting die a scoreboard and a trimmer it's really easy and you can do it in lots of different sizes too so there are six new items within the new collection and as I say Magic Roundabout all your favourite characters are in there. Let's start first of all with the paper pack because this is usually the item that if people are on a budget or they're just not sure yet how they're going to use it they'll grab this first and then they come back and get the other items when they realise how much fun it is. Now this paper pack includes die cut toppers that are foiled, you've got some that are plain matte, not foiled as well, you've also got pattern papers in here, both again plain matte and foiled, so there's lots to choose from, but look at that holographic foiling, how fabulous is that, it's absolutely beautiful, so you've got two sheets of, I believe it's two sheets of each design there, so they're the plain ones, so again, like I say, die cut, so everything pops out, let's just pop that out for you, there you go, look nice and clean around the edge, now because there's a lot here and I have already been using this, you're going to have a few bits drop out, but look at these toppers, they're going to make the quickest, most beautiful cards, and then we've got foiled papers and our plain papers too lots of the characters included within those so much color and so much fun so they are one item all of those and then we've got ephemera so we've got two different packs of ephemera one of them is the shaped cards so these are the large roundabouts and i'll show you i'm using those in my card today plus you have things like the flower the florals as well lots of different embellishments that you can add to the roundabout including the additional horses and then we've also got this fabulous set of again foiled um kind of speech bubbles so you've got all your sentiments in there let's get dizzy there's lots in there that kind of coordinate with what the characters would have said in the tv program program um, then you've got these ones now these are actually stickers so the ephemera are not adhesive they are like on a cardboard a heavier weight of cardstock these ones are more of a paper sticker so if I just take this out because you've got 60 sentiments in here let's just show you look at all of that shimmer isn't that just absolutely amazing so for example boinging by to just to say hi um you've got let's get dizzy hop on board for some fun cool times man <laughs> we know who said that um all sorts that i love you it's your special day we miss you time time for bed of course have a magical time groovy baby <laughs> there's lots in there and lots for every occasion then we've got two stamp and die sets as well so each of these as you can see all the black lines are individual stamps and then all the pink shapes here are your outline dies for each of the images i love 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 this huge hot air balloon i'm going to be doing lots of techniques with that one for sure but again you've got all the usual characters and then you've got some more added in as well and you can really build up fantastic scenes with these so let's get straight into this tutorial as I said you only need one nesting die so you'll need to have a hexagon next nesting die so the hexagon six sides nice and easy and we're going to cut this twice I tend to take one sheet of A4 cardstock cut it in half, layer it together, I know my nesting die, it's going through my big shot, it's going to cut through both of those at once, so not a problem for me to do. Then you're also going to need a second sheet of cardstock. In total, the whole card base took only two sheets of A4 cardstock, so it really is so simple to put together, and not making a huge dent in my crafting stash either. So I'm just going to cut this, like I say, through both layers, so I've got two hexagons. Now I've decided to go with quite large hexagons here today um, just so you can really see closely what I'm doing but you can make this much smaller if you prefer to make a smaller card alternatively if you have the right size cardstock um, and of course 
die cutting machine you could even do this bigger but the one essentially is a hexagon die we're not going to be using any other dies for this mechanism either so um yeah so even if you're a beginner crafter and you've only just started collecting elements likelihood is that a nesting die is going to be part of that hexagons are a really popular shape so um, it's well worth having lots of these around so there's my two hexagons as you can see they nest together beautifully now two more items that i am going to be using these are going to be used a lot while creating the base and these are from creative craft products my trimmer and also my scoreboard now if you've only got the trimmer but you have the scoring blade on it the white one you could use this unfortunately i dropped mine the other day and um i i can't find my white blade it's gone under a unit somewhere so I've got some more on order so for now I am going to be using my trimmer for cutting and my score but score board for scoring but as I say if you do have the trim with the scoring tool you can use this for both so still with both hexagons layered together there I'm going to place this against the edge of my scoreboard and I'm going to score myself a line directly down the middle down the center so you should be able to easily see where the two points go and I'm going to score down there. Then I'm going to come to my trimmer and I'm going to cut this. I'm going to put this on around about the two centimetre mark on both ends and I'm going to trim through both hexagons. So what I've got now is two part hexagons that will fold in the middle as such. So they've got a tab on them there we go and then I've got two more spare pieces now I'm also going to use these so I'll put my large pieces to the side they're going to make up my base these are really handy because they are already cut to a good width I'm going to score from the shorter edge um, not too long too and maybe an inch at most and then half an inch now you don't really need the inch mark but I just like to do that to mark where I'm going to cut Again, I'm really saving time by keeping everything together. I'm just going to trim down that one inch line. Doesn't have to be exact. We're just creating a tab here, but we're utilizing the fact that we have got the perfect width in the scrap paper here. And then I'm going to trim off the two triangles and I'll show you why in a minute. This will become quite clear in just a moment. We've now got ourselves two tabs that have a fold in the middle. But not only that, these are the perfect size for when we need to add tabs to the smaller edge of our hexagons. Because they came from the excess with the short edge, these parts are the same length as these. So I'm not wasting any more cardstock. I'm not having to measure how long these need to be. They're already the correct width. Now, while I have my scoreboard, I'm going to also create the rest of the base. And I'm going to turn my scoreboard around. This is because printed in black around my scoreboard, I have inches, but I'd like to use centimeters. And we have centimeters just embossed on these two edges. So it's easier for me to read them here and score down my cardstock once I know the measurements. Now, the way you're going to know the measurement for this next part is to take a look at your nesting die, your hexagon that you've cut, and take a ruler. And you want to just measure the, one of the short edges. Now, in theory, they should all be the same width or the same length because they, if it's an equal hexagon, this one in particular is eight centimeters. So I'd like to create a base, as you can see around here, that's got six panels and each one is going to be eight centimeters long. So I'm going to do this in two halves. So what I want to do first of all is I want to uh, score myself eight centimeters then i want to go to 16 centimeters which is of course another eight on top and then i want to go to 24 which again is another eight on top of that so once i've got eight centimeters eight centimeters eight centimeters i then just need to do another one there's a few increments on your scoreboard maybe another centimeter that one is going to be for a tab 
Now here we can change things up as well. We can decide now what height we'd like our base to be. I have gone here with seven centimeter high base. Um, you could do it really deep or you could do it really quite shallow. Depends how much you're happy to have peeking out when the whole thing is closed. So the first thing we're going to do with our trimmer is just take off the excess at the end. So just past that one centimeter tab we created, I've just taken off the excess here. So I've still got my eight, 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 and around one centimeter. Now I need to do the um, depth that we we're talking about. And as I say, I did mine at seven centimeters. So I'm just going to pop this into my trimmer. Now my score lines are going horizontally across the trimmer. And I'm going to go through that seven centimeters and pop this to the side. And then again, the same amount, pop that up to my seven centimeter line. And I'm going to keep this because this is going to come in really handy later as well. So just pop that to the side. So just to sum up, we should have two long strips that will fold quite easily into three panels and a tab each. And we've got our two half hexagons with a tab and we've got our additional tabs here. Now the first thing we need to do is add our additional short tabs to the short end of each of our hexagons. To keep everything neat and hidden, I prefer to do this on the same side as the uh, large tab lifts up. So I'm going to put the glue on this edge. And just slide that on, folding it in half so I can see where it's right at the edge. There we go and pop that side to dry so you can see we've just got our tab on there and the same on the other side. Now while that's drying I'm going to work on the inside of these strips. So you want to make sure that they are going to be running with the tab on one end and then the other tab will go to the other straight end so rather than two tabs together. So place them together like so. And then on the inside, as you can see, mine's white, so you can clearly see which is the inside, which is the outside. I'm going to mark on here around about a centimeter down from the top. I'm going to do this on both and draw myself a straight line across there with a pencil. This is just going to help guide you when you stick your hexagon halves on. Now with this, you're going to be working on the middle square square or the middle section of these strips. So I'm going to apply glue to the underside of each of the tabs. I find this easier if you actually fold them in half and then press them along each of these edges like so. So you've just got that pencil line above there, you can see where you're putting that. Press that down really hard and again just leave that to dry. We don't want to be pulling around on anything while the glue is still wet. The glue that I'm using is the Craft Stash Bookbinding Glue. It's absolutely brilliant for these sorts of paper to paper, cardstock to cardstock jobs. It does glue really quickly or adhere really quickly and then it holds brilliantly afterwards as well and actually dries quite quickly. And then once they're dry, I'm just going to put glue along the edge here. This is one of the straight edges and pop the tab over the top. Fold over the last tab and adhere that under the uh, last edge that's open there. So bring those two together. Now, if you pop everything down flat, you should be able to make sure that this all lines up beautifully. And at this moment, I'm not gluing together these two hexagon halves. They are still, as you can see, completely separate. So bring your hexagon halves up. Be careful if the glue is still drying anywhere. And what I now need to do is I need to decide where my characters are going to be. As you can see, I've actually got three characters on the what I call the front half. And if we turn this round, I've then got um, on the back, I've got Dylan and Ermatrude on this side. So um, yeah, there's two on that side. Now I've also got Brian down here on the front. I could have put him up here, so three on each side. Decide how many characters you want on each one of your hexagons. You don't need to worry about the magic roundabout in the middle. That one actually goes between the two. So you just need to think. So there's three 
on one side, two on the other. The way I'm going to add slots for this is I'm actually going to take a small craft mat and just place it in between the two. This is not disturbing anything while the things are drying. I'm going to take a craft knife and a ruler. You could pop this into a trimmer if you prefer, just make sure you're keeping both of your, or your other side of your hexagon out of the way. And I'm just going to add some slits now these or slots whichever you prefer to call them these need to be uh just over a centimeter in length and i like to just scatter them about around the card making sure i'm going right through there we go so i'll just do these ones for now to show you so we've got three slots on there now i'm going to pop that aside to dry i like to give it time to finish drying completely every now and then make sure i'm not disturbing any glue that's not quite set and i'm going to come back to the strip of cardstock that i said you've actually got some score lines on here um don't, we're going to use this so don't throw that away what i'm going to be doing with this one is trimming this into a few different pieces now i'm going to do this by hand but you could do this with a trimmer of course and i'm going to be cutting along the edge or up the length of these around about a centimeter in width for each one and i've got that small tab score line i don't know if you can just see that if i just pull these back and forth i've got that small tab score line just there then I'm going to snip all the way along, giving this maybe uh, four or five centimetres and then snipping all of these off to give me lots of tabs. Now each one of these tabs I'm going to pair up with another one and I'm going to glue them, not the small tabs and where the score line was, but the long edges. I'm going to glue those together for each one. Now I'm going to have, there's going to be uh, four here. I've got a spare there so oh, sorry three three so three pairs and then i'll do that again using another one of the score lines that are already on this cardstock so again set those aside to dry and it's great having this there's always little bits you can be getting on with while things are drying uh, if you want to give this a little more time you could be putting your mats and layers on so for example i use one of the holographic pattern papers cut myself some six by seven centimeter rectangles and i went all the way around the edge with those as well um, that just sort of used a bit of time while things were drying too um, so once you're happy that this is dry and you can kind of manipulate it a little bit you're going to want the um, hexagon shape I call them hexagons although they're only halves now to fold downwards now for the centerpiece that pops up I'm going to be taking from the ephemera pack the two magic roundabouts there's four of these and then there's one larger one as well um, I'm using the smaller one for this card but we're going to uh, adhere them back to back now these are not perfectly symmetrical images as you can see the horses there um, do make them slightly different shapes but the main image is symmetrical so I'm just going to apply glue to the areas that are so that's down the center here and then the uh, base as well and that should be enough to glue these two together so we've got front and back and the great thing is because we've got a white border around this image the fact that there's a couple of white bits here just makes it look even more three-dimensional which i love so putting those two together and again allow that to dry before you go on to the next stage now I did make the mistake of gluing these tabs together, forgetting to put this in first. So uh, I've just peeled them off, which of course has left that looking quite messy. But just so that you remember, pop in your item that you want in the middle of your roundabout or whatever you want to call it, your platform, pop that in from, this is the top, this is the bottom. So in from the top, between everything, straight through the middle so that you can see the base there. And you want the base to just overlap onto those two tabs there in the center and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add glue to both sides so underneath the roundabout and over the top and I'm going to encase this roundabout base in between these two tabs and put that all together now this is going to need a good few moments to dry as well 
once these have dried you should have your platform with your roundabout whatever it is encased on the inside and as this pops up you'll see that that will go level with uh, the rest of the base and that will stand in there perfect now we've got the little slots that we cut earlier and we need to put these tabs inside so i'm going to feed these through the back here so just popping one in as you can see it comes out the top here i'm going to push this through all the way through until the wings are such on the back just touch under there i'm going to apply just a little bit of glue here and this is going to be a small dot underneath each of the tabs and just secure this to the underside of the hexagon half so just pushing that in as far as that will go so that will stand up there and be just glued and i'm going to repeat this for any of the others that's where your characters would stand that would also fold flat as well now i've made these quite long here but you can snip them down once you know which of your characters are going to be going on them you can easily snip these down to the length that you need so as you can see there for Dougal I had to cut that down quite a bit but once you've added your tabs it's simply decoration and adding your characters I mean you can add as many tabs as you want to ensure that you've got as many characters sort of bouncing around in there as possible all around the edge of course can be decorated too it's so much fun such a beautiful card to create and as i say everything then folds down completely flat i hope you've enjoyed this tutorial for making this platform display card of course you can use this technique for lots of other characters lots of other themes as well let us know in the comments what you might be trying out for don't forget of course to make sure you have got plenty of uh, hexagon dies of course in your stash we have a fantastic range of nesting dies available at craft stash all linked down below for you and if you love the magic roundabout don't forget to check these out because they notoriously do sell out fast you'll find those here in the link so we'd love it if you could subscribe to the craft stash channel just here for more tips and tutorials like this one and we think you're also really going to like this video that's just here too take care everybody see you again very soon